All right, section 7.7 .7 is solving quadratics using the quadratic formula. Um, this may look familiar to some of you. And the quadratic equation looks like this. Now, when I was learning how to teach uh, high school, my, my sponsor teacher, what they call them, uh, taught me how to remember the quadratic formula. And it goes with the song. And if anybody knows the song, nobody likes me, everybody hates me, I'm going to the garden to eat worms, then you'll be fine. You'll know exactly what this is going on here. Now, watch this. x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So it doesn't totally fit because the bottom is, is a little bit weird, right? But you get the idea. It's a good way to remember it. Anyways, um, so this is the quadratic formula. Notice this little plus or minus bit. Well, that means that you're going to have two answers. It's going to be negative b plus all this over 2a. And the other answer is going to be negative b minus all this over 2a. So, how do we use it? Well, it's used to solve quadratic equations that are in this form, ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are numbers. Okay? There is the odd case where either a, b, and c, well, usually b or c, um, are equal to 0. But in that case, you probably wouldn't use the quadratic uh, equation. You only really want to use the quadratic equation when you have it in the form like this. Okay, so how do we do this? So example one, we're going to solve this one. Uh, 3x squared minus 14x plus 2 equals 0. Notice it says solve. It's got to be equal to 0. And we're going to use the quadratic formula right there. Okay. First things I need are my values for a, b, and c. My value for a is 3. My value for b is the value in front of x, which is negative 14. Very, very important about signs here, because notice I have a negative b. And my c value is 2. Now we just plug all our, all our values in. Remember what I said about the negative b? Well, if b is already negative, it's minus 14, and I have negative b, what do you think happens? Right, it changes to positive 14. So I get 14 plus or minus, the square root of b squared is 14 squared minus 4 times 3 times 2 all over 2a which is 2 times 3. All right so let's work this out here. I'm going to work out the inside on my calculator 14 squared 14 squared minus, I can use brackets, 4 times 3 times 2 is equal to 172. So I get 14 plus or minus the square root of 172 all over 2 times 3 is 6. Now we're going to look at what exact values are because the book asks you to use exact values. I could easily make this into um, decimals, right? I could say well, what's the square root of 172? Okay, it's 13.11. So that means that I have two answers. I have 14 plus, what is that? 13.11. 14 plus 13.11 all over 6. And I have 14 minus 13.11 all over 6. And these both break down to decimals. I have 14 plus that answer divided by 6 gets me 4.5 and I have 14 minus 13.11 enter divided by 5 notice I'm doing the subtraction first and then the division because that's what's on top and I want to make sure my calculator does that because I need to do the top first and then I do the bottom. Oops, not divided by 5. So 14 minus 13.11, sorry, divided by 6. So I get 0 0.14 or 0 0.15. So I get two answers that are decimals. Those are not exact values though. My exact values would look like this. I would have 14 plus. Now, square root 172, let's see if that breaks down. Does 172, does, do any perfect squares go into it? 4? 
Yeah, 4 goes into it 43 times. Anything bigger? Well, probably not, because 43, I think, is a prime number, actually. So we can break that down into square root of 4. Before we do this, I know that the square root of 172 equals the square root of 4 times 43. I bring the 4 out, and I take the square root of it, and it becomes 2 root 43. The back of the book probably will do this. If you're checking answers for exact values, it'll probably break it down. So 2 root 43. Then I get 14 plus or minus 2 root 43 all over 6. Can we reduce that? Yes, because 2 goes into 14, 2, and 6. <clears throat> 14 becomes 7, 2 becomes 1, 6 becomes 3. So that leaves me with 7 plus or minus square root of 43 all over 3. What are my exact values? My exact values are 7 plus root 43 over 2, or sorry, over 3, and 7 minus root 43 over 3. So there's a lot of stuff involved there. You can either give the decimal answers, which are up here, 1 plus, 1's minus, or you can give the exact values, which are down here, 1 plus, 1's minus. Okay? And be aware how to reduce radicals. It's very important. Because answers on uh, tests usually want them in reduced radical form. Okay, So just make sure of that. Now, verify by graphing. What does that mean? Well, it means I'm going to take my graphing calculator and I'm going to plug in this equation. 3x squared minus 14x plus 2. I graph it. And let's see, it cuts through at 4 and a half. 1, 2, 3, 4 and a half. Yep, and at 0 0.15. Sure. I'm sure if we zoomed in on there, we could actually check, right? But you can make sure. Um, let's actually change our window settings then to, let's say, negative 1. And all the way up to a little bit more, 5, just so it zooms in a lot. Let's make it just negative 10. 10. Let's graph that. Okay, good. So it's four and a half exactly, and it's a little bit more than zero, so it's probably 0 0.15. So you can double check using your graph, right? Graph comes through, cuts through a little bit there, and then one, two, three, four and a half. We saw in our graph that it cuts through there. It's going to come down and go back up. Okay, so verify by graphing just means check your graph. And if you want, you can actually calculate those values, right? Second, calculate. We're calculating the zeros. Um, remember how to do your left bound? Where's my cursor? I can't see it. Here, let's zoom standard. So zoom six. Let's go second calculate, zeros, there's my cursor. Okay, so it's to the left, yeah, it's to the left of the zero, so I press enter. To the right, I have to move it to the right or below, press enter. 0 0.15, yep, that's what I had. What about my second one? Calculate my zero to the left, I'm going to move it, move it. Notice how it's disappeared now because it's on the bottom. It'll start coming up pretty soon. And you can tell because your x values, you can watch them as they kind of go, where am I? Well, I'm at 3.4. Where am I now? I'm at 3.8. Where am I now? My x value is 4, right? So I need to be to the left of my 0. So that's a little bit below and to the left. And then I go to the right. So I go right, right, right across the 0, and I press Enter. 4.5. Good. So that's verifying by graphing. Make sure that you know how the second function calculate the zeros and the left bound, right bound thing again. All right, example two, so one more. Let's solve 5x squared minus 10x plus three. So same thing, I have my a, b, and my c values. I plug them into the x equals uh, negative b plus minus. So I get x equals negative b. 10 is already negative, so it's gonna become positive 10, plus or minus the square root of negative 10 squared minus four times five times 3. 
all over 2 times 5, which is 10. I'm going to do a little bit. Uh, do, do as much as you can in your head first, right? So, actually, I can do a lot of this in my head. So 10 plus or minus, the square root of 10 squared is 100, or negative 10 squared is 100. Minus 4 times 5 is 20, times 3 is 60. Uh-oh, what's happening here? Hmm, let me see. I get 10 plus or minus the square root of negative 50 over 10. Well, I can't do that. I can't take the square root of the negative 50. So there are no roots. Let's check this. Let's verify by graphing. So go to my graph. Clear it. 5x squared minus 10x plus 3. Graph it. Let's check that again. So 5x squared minus 10x plus 3 equals 0. What did I do wrong? So negative 4 times a c. Oh, I put, what am I doing? 10. Wow. Okay, so that's 100. That's a good point, though. 100 minus, and 4 times 5 is 20, times 3 is 60. That's going to be 100 minus 60 is 40. Wow. If you came up with a, with a question that has a negative sign in front, or a negative sign inside the um, square root, it does mean that it has no roots. So be aware of that. That's why I kind of wanted to go through that question, because I thought it did, but it doesn't. But that's fine. Um, see, that's why verify by graphing is very, very important. Because we see that, wait a second, it does have roots. Um, so let's just finish this one off. So we get 10 plus, uh, 10 plus root 40 over 10, and 10 minus root 40 over 10. And 10 minus root 40 over 10. Notice that root 40 can break up into 4 times 10, which breaks up into 2 root 10. So this whoops, becomes 10 plus 2 root 10, and this one becomes 10 minus 2 root 10. And again, you could change those into, frac or into decimals if you wanted to. You could approximate them, right? OK, last one, example 3. So it says solve 2x minus 3 equals 3x squared. So first thing we want to do is we want to rearrange in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. So it's my squared term first, my x term second, and my number last. So I move the 3x squared over, I get 2x minus 3 minus 3x squared equals 0. Notice when I bring the 3x squared over, it becomes negative. Now I have to rearrange it in this form because I don't know what my a, b, or c, or if you know what your a, b, and c is, then you're okay. But I usually like to put my x squared term first, then plus 2x, and minus 3 equals 0. So you know what your a value your b value, and your c value are. Let's just check this in the quadratic formula to see if, if this has roots or not. So x equals negative b, which is negative 2, because it's positive this time. So negative b is negative 2, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 4. We'll put 2 squared, minus 4 times negative 3 times negative 3, all over 2a, which is negative 6. So let's work out the inside here. I get x is equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 4. Now be really careful here because it's negative 4 times negative 3, which is a positive 12, times a negative 3, which is a negative 36, all over negative 6. Now look at what's going to happen. I have x equals negative 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 32 all over negative 6. So this is what I was trying to show you with the last example. Um, let's verify by graphing just to be sure this time again. Clear that. So I get 2x squared. Oh, whoops. I'm doing this one, using this one down here. So negative 3 x squared. You can use 2x minus 3 minus 3x squared too. It doesn't really matter. Your graphing calculator will do it all. Um, it's very smart. Plus 2x minus 3. Make sure everything's all right. Yep. Graph it. Okay. This is what I was trying to show you. So this one has no roots.
Why? Look at the graph. It's shaped upside down, and it doesn't even go above the x-axis. So you have a graph that is shaped upside down and doesn't go above the x-axis. Therefore, it has no roots because it never cuts the axis. Um, another definition of that, if you had a graph that was, up, that was right side up, but shaped like that, where it's above the x-axis that never crosses. So you can have no roots. It depends on where the graph is located. Um, just be really clear to check by graphing just to make sure and calculate them and make sure that you can understand what why there are no roots because you cannot take the square root of a negative number.